Well, good morning, everybody. It's me, Mitch. This is not a cooking video, but I'm gonna do it while I make my breakfast. The subject of the day is something that's on my mind because I hear I hear so much about about the subject that I always wonder because I constantly wonder if I'm if I'm doing the right thing and and if carnivore is actually the best diet to sustain for a lifetime with no carbs because you hear some of the major influencers guys like Sean Baker a doctor that I really respect Dr. Nadir Ali who I think has got some tremendous insights into the biology of the carnivore diet Sean Baker talks about uh, the fact that he doesn't really or really recommends the carnivore diet more as a way to fix things. But uh, he's neither a proponent or opponent of adopting it as a lifetime, a lifetime lifestyle. Now for me, I've been on carnivore for 16 months and in that 16 months I haven't had an ounce of carbs other than the very few trace carbs that might be in eggs and meat and other things that we eat and carnivore has done everything everything that I wanted it to do, especially in curing my health problems, eliminating any autoimmune issues that I've had, reducing the size of my kidney stones, allowing me to get down to 138 to 40 pounds and stay there for months and months and months with no effort, never being hungry. And I think one of the most important things that it's done for me, it has completely eliminated my cravings. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not still an addict, but it has eliminated my cravings. I don't suffer anymore the torture of wanting to eat something that I know I cannot eat and that is what makes it sustainable but after 16 months and learning more and more about the biochemistry especially what insulin does and listening to guys like Sean Baker and Dr. Nadir Ali and a lot of the other really really knowledgeable doctors and researchers in biochemistry. I wonder sometimes, and even though I think he's taken it a little too far, is Paul Saladino right? And there's one of the biggest controversies we have in our space. Now Paul has gone and added, he's completely gone off carnivore and keto and become somebody who indulges in a tremendous amount of carbs and I guess for him it works okay. It's hard to tell what's going to happen in years and actually none of us are going to know who was really right about this until somebody in the next generations or two goes back and reanalyzes what happened to us and when we died and how. But we can't know that. So I'm going to play a little clip here and I normally don't do that, but I think it's important that I do, from a video from Dr. Ali where he's talking about just this and he's talking about it in reference to high cholesterol levels and the benefits of whether adding some carbs in from time to time and not a lot and certainly not junk food might not be beneficial 
for certain things and when and when you shouldn't do it. And then I'll come back and wrap this up and give you my opinions and what I think I have to do for myself and why. Periodic spiking of your insulin levels because insulin is always considered to be a bad player. But could it be a good player? Because insulin does several good things also. Number one, does it imp help improve your muscle mass? Does insulin help improve your muscle mass? The answer to that question is yes. It activates mTOR, which makes you build protein. It improves muscle mass. Does it improve connections between brain cells? Is our brain have a lot of insulin receptors? Yes, yes, it does. So people who are metabolically healthy, should they try to spike their insulin a little bit? Eat a small amount of honey, go get some fruits, eat a small amount of brown rice periodically. Now, when you do that, your LDL levels will drop a little bit. Is that a good or a bad thing? So I don't know the answer to that. So I generally say if you get very metabolically healthy and you're happy the way you look, you're not overweight and you are somebody who after cheating a little bit will not go on to binge cheating, <laughs> that you should try it. On the other hand, if you know yourself that if you cheat a little bit, it'll just lead to you cheating indefinitely, then I should say, no, don't try it. Just remain where you are. Now, I've put a link to that video from Dr. Ali because he makes a lot of different points in talking about why some people who go on a low-carb diet, their LDL actually goes down, why some, some stays the same, and why like the lean mass hyper responders, their LDL skyrockets, he makes the point that it has to do with the level of uh, PCSK9 that they're genetically uh, predisposed to have in their body. And I think that I'm one of these guys that happens to be in that lean mass hyper responder category because of my PCSK9 levels. And he also talks about some of the benefits of spiking your insulin on a occasional basis. And that kind of mimics the flexing, I would think, in and out of uh, ketosis and switching, being able to switch back and forth to becoming a sugar burner like our ancestors had to be during the times of uh, them hunting for survival food and back into fat burning mode when the, you know, the preferred fuel of meat and fat was available. I've heard the point made many times that you need to kind of exercise this ability of the body to switch back and forth and a lot of people call it Flex, and there's been books written about that, about that that's a good thing and that you, you shouldn't stay in one mode or another constantly, but you should allow your body to switch back and forth. And I think that's probably not a bad idea. So all other things considered, after 16 months on the carnivore diet, it seems like the best thing for me to do would be to occasionally, because carnivore is not a religion, it's a science, occasionally sin <laughs> by having some, a little bit of fruit or, or something else with sugar in it. But here's the rub. And here's where the point that I've been making since day one on my YouTube journey with carnivore. And that is addiction. There are those of us more than I think would want to admit 
who are severely addicted to sugar. All my life I've been battling this addiction and it has been responsible for every failure of every diet I've ever had. The reason I haven't even experimented by adding in a small amount of fruit or something is that I know for a fact that I am unable, no matter how strong I think I am or how smart I think I am, to control the tendency for me, once I get that taste of sugar again, to get within months all the way back to square one with the pain and the sickness and justifying it to myself all the way. It is a dangerous thing for me and other addicts like me to do. I, I never really thought about whether or how important there was anybody, whether anybody else was actually thinking about this on the same terms that I was until I saw this video from Dr. Ali. And his conclusions in this video steer my conclusions for what I, what I need to do for my life and have to steer your conclusions in a decision you probably should think about making after you've gotten to the same point, fixing the things with the carnivore diet as to whether you should start adding back in some of those other foods. Not only because you want to, but because there might be some actual health benefits to it. And whether you should risk doing that by evaluating the level of your own addiction and your own history in trying to fight that addiction. And then you make your decision based on that. Can you live your whole life on carnivore with zero carbs? Is it going to affect your longevity? Is the ability not to flex so much going to have negative impacts? We can't know. Only people from the future looking back and having real data that's accurate could possibly make that determination. If my life is a year shorter, if I only live to be 115 instead of 110, let's say, for me it's worth living and feeling like I do now. If I only live to 90, same thing. That's more important to me than trying to do something to, quote, extend my life that's going to make me sick and probably die sooner anyway. So my decision for me personally is carnivore for life, like Sean Baker, like Anthony Chafee. As the years go by and I continue to make YouTube videos, We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Report on, I'll keep reporting on my progress. Can I recommend that for you? No. Do I know absolutely the answer as to what the outcome will be? No. Can I take my best guess? I think so. And my best guess for me is accept the high LDL as not being dangerous, but being actually, actually advantageous. Stop worrying about all the naysayers out there because we've already talked about the information and where they got it and what they're working on. In the end, it's a personal decision. And as with any personal decision, stay open to new information and new data and listen to new opinions and do the best you can for yourself. take the rest of the day off and eat meat.